Hello, everyone. Hi. Are we ready with the... Okay, great. All right. So, good day, everyone. My name is Patrick Alexander. I'll be giving you a talk today on how to manually back up your WordPress website. Uh, it's called Don't Put All Your Plugins in One Basket. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Has the website ever been hacked or compromised? Miraculously disappeared? Been shut down by your hosting provider for God knows what. Typically non payment, but. <laughs> All right, do, do you rely on plugins for backups? Anybody here rely on plugins for backing up your site? Okay, so essentially, <laughs> the issue with that is not all plugins are created equal, and not all plugins follow the conventions for building plugins. So everyone, now and again, not necessarily a backup plugin, but any rogue or random plugin you install may back up your site and may, they may destroy your site. And with that said, the next course of action would be to depend on your hosting provider for that backup. But how many of you know that most hosting providers only back up your site for one week? So you only get one week of backups. <laughs> so if your site was compromised way before that one week, how would you retrieve your content? So essentially, that's what this talk is about. I'm going to teach you in 10 minutes how to have that one solid backup. As everybody, I'm sure, is familiar with Murphy's Law, everything that can go wrong will go wrong at the worst possible time. All right. So I'm going to just give you a brief overview of how your WordPress website is set up. It has a lot of moving parts. There's a database. There's an application file, uh, application files, and your other files. So essentially, if you're going to back up your WordPress site, you need to back up all these moving parts. All right, so the first step in backing up your site is backing up your database. And this is a quick overview of how it's done. You log into the database, you select the database, you, select the database, you export the database, and you save the file. So the very first step is logging into your database. Most web hosting uh, companies use PHP MyAdmin, and that's how the typical interface would look. You would, need, you would need a little bit more credentials. You could ask your hosting company for it, but typically it's in your wp-config.php file, and that's where you'd see the database host you would see the username and the password that you more likely selected. So you can log in with phpMyAdmin or any other database applications, and um, all you would need are the credentials. And when you log in, the first thing you do is you identify your database, and you identify your database, you select that database, the next step is you pick the export option here, and the first one right here. And you typically select all of these default options, but also select the custom def default option. And you would export it, you save that file, you save that file in your desktop so you can retrieve it later on. So now you have your you have your database. 
you have a backup of your database. And um, something I failed to mention at the beginning, WordPress is what is called a database-driven application. So most, 99.9% .9 of your important information is stored in a database. So you really want to have a copy of that. So after you back up the database, the next step is to back up your files. To do that, you use an FTP program. The most popular open source free one is FileZilla. And this is a quick overview. You would FTP into your, into your server and download your files. So this is what a typical FileZilla interface would look like. And you essentially, when you log in there, the same thing. You would need to put in the protocols to log on to the host. So you would need the host server FTP access, so that URL. And you would need your username and password. Again, if you don't know what it is, you can always contact your host, and they should be able to give that to you, your host provider, your hosting provider. So after you logged in to your, to your, um, sorry, after you log in to your server, you want to identify where your files, you want to identify where your files are, and typically when you log in, you would get to your web directory, and your files would normally be named after your website name. So if your website is www.mywebsite.com, your directory would be www.mywebsite.com. All right, and what you would do is you'd right click on that file, you'd right click on this thing, on the directory, and select download, and you'd store that on, where, on your local machine, either your desktop or your documents. And you download the entire folder, because you want all the files. And when you download the entire folder, you would, um, it will have both your application files and your upload and your data files. And your, typically your data files, like your PDFs or any files you uploaded in your website, your media files, they would be in the uploads folder. So if you, essentially the uploads folder would be the most important folder in that structure because it's what has your actual files. The other files, you could get it from any WordPress installation of that same version. All right, so the next step in this process is to restore your database. So your site gets compromised. You can't access, you can't access any of the original content, but you do have that one manual backup that you made. So the next step is to do the reverse of what we just did. So you're gonna, the first step is to restore your database. As previously shown, you log on to that, you log on to phpMyAdmin or the application that you're using. You select your database and the key is to drop all the tables. And the reason for doing that is to avoid any conflicts that might arise. So if you have a, a if there's existing table and existing content, when you're trying to import, it'll give you error, 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 error. So to avoid that, you're gonna import all the original content, so you drop all the tables. Not a database, just the tables in the database. <laughs> and one more thing, ensure that the database, is the, the, the database name is the same name as the one that you're gonna import. So, so once you do that, you click on import. And it's, it's very intuitive, it's right there on the menu options. And you select the file that you saved. And then hit go, and that's it. So now that you restore your database, you need to restore your WordPress files. Okay, and then the same thing, you open, you FTP to your server, right? using, again, FileZilla, and you need the reverse 
of what you did before. So right now you're going to get the files from your local computer and you're going to push it to the host. So from your local machine, you right click, you need upload, and you push the content to the server, and you want to tell it to overwrite any, anything that's there because you want the original content that you had before. And that would be it. So the next step is to actually go to your domain.com to verify that everything is back up. All right, and um, the key is seeing is believing, but knowing is best. So the same thing, if you have that backup, but you still want to verify that it is good, you can also restore it in a temporary environment. Even before anything happens to know that you can actually restore your site when that time comes, because that time typically comes in a crucial moment. <laughs> so you have to verify that this can be done. One strategy, I am not sure what technical you are, you could use, you could set up a virtual machine on your PC or your Mac, and a popular virtual uh, VM is VirtualBox. Or if you're using Mac, you could use VMware, right? Another strategy you could use um, on this platform, it's called WBCO.com. It's a platform that my company created. You could always go on there and select a free staging environment to test this out. Or, again, if you're more tech savvy on your local machine, on a, on a Windows machine, you can use WAMP. <laughs> on a Mac machine, use MAMP. And then you follow those steps that we had before. In a nutshell, it's really not that complicated. <laughs> it's only complicated because you haven't done it before. So I advise you to try it. And here's my contact information. If anybody asks, do we have any questions? So, yes. So, so essentially what you're doing is when you do the application backup and all that stuff, you're actually taking a snapshot of your website at that moment in time. So that's something I could mention. If every time you do a major update, you can always do another manual backup. And if you're very tech savvy, you can schedule a cron job to do that for yourself. So whenever you're doing a backup, you're taking a backup of that website at that exact moment in time without the update. So that makes sense? Okay. Yes. Right. So with automated backups, you can use a cron job. So these steps, you would have to write a script to do exactly some of those things here, right? But you would have to do it using a cron job. And what I will do, if you check our website in the future, I'll write a blog post about how to do that. But this is, the automa some of the automatic backups happen with plugins, but as I said, plugins can crash your site. So you want to manually schedule your automatic backup yourself if you're that tech savvy. If not, every time you have a major update on your site, you can go ahead and do this manual um, backup process. Any other questions? Right, so what you're doing is that, as I said, you're grabbing exactly what's there. So if you notice, I didn't mention going to the site and doing changing settings, right? So when you take a snapshot, you take a snapshot of exactly what's there. And a way to verify it is to, the step before I showed is to set up a staging environment. You can use our platform. You could use this, all these are steps. So if you want to get more involved, these are four or three crucial ways you could do it. You could be that tech person and set up a VM, a virtual machine, install a LAMP stack and do the restore. You could use our platform, you could use MAMP or WAMP, but all is a little bit more technical stuff. You could Google how to set up these environments, and then you do that restore to verify exactly what you're saying here. But as I reiterate is that when you do this backup, you're taking a snapshot of exactly what's currently existing on your site. Any other, any other questions?
So, so essentially, the rule of thumb is anytime you install something on there that you cannot afford to lose. <laughs> so you don't do it every time. Or if you want to schedule every time, you can, as I said, figure out how to do that script and that cron job because that's really why you have the, um, some of the plugins. And the plugins that allows you to put them in Dropbox and all that stuff, that's cool as well. But sometimes they overwrite what is already there. They keep it for seven days or how long you schedule it for. So that's just that one backup that you want to have. And essentially, as I said, if you do that one major update, that's when you'd want to have that manual backup process done or figure out how to write a crunch up to do it how frequently you want. Yes. It will decide to be the same way. It's the same way because if, if, if you notice, right, this is not necessarily even WordPress specific because we didn't go and change any configuration. We chose the source, right? We chose the core files. We chose the database. We backed up the database. So if you know your multi-site database, you do the exact same thing. You know where it's stored on your host, right? You know the application files are the exact same process. So this is not necessarily specific to WordPress site. It's specific to any site that you have online. But as long as you know where the source files are and the database files are, that's what you do. Um, any other questions? Okay, I'll be at the happiness bar and I'm out of time, so time for lunch. Thank you very much.